welcome to Tom Padula TV and uh, to another interview with one of my favourite parliamentarians, Calvin Thompson. Now, last time he was in government, this time he's in opposition. And maybe a more humble approach to our look, <laughs> especially because today is grand final day, just before the game is going to start. So I'm not sure whether Hawthorne or Fremantle will win, but in my opinion, you know, I'd love Hawthorne to win, but if Fremantle won, uh, it would be better for the national competition. So I leave it up to you, the viewer, because I am a Collingwood supporter, so I can't say much. But what I can say is welcome to Calvin Thompson, and how does it feel to be free of government? Uh, uh, well, Tom, fir first I should observe that... Uh uh, seeing as uh, as a Labor person, I I am often sympathetic to the the one who's missed out. The fact that Frio hasn't won a premiership yet uh, causes me to think, oh well, it wouldn't be a bad thing if if they got up and and had a go. But we anyhow, think we, of the same, we, we, the we, same we, lines. We don't we, we we don't know how how this will go. Uh, yes, it's disappointing to have uh, lost the election. It was a pretty decisive election result, and that was that was disappointing for us. And we've got a a, a lot of rebuilding and a lot of rethinking to do. Um, I think that we should nevertheless be uh, proud of our record in terms of managing the economy. I've, I, I've said to you and others uh, over the years, Australia's in uh, very good shape compared to a, a lot of countries around the world. Low inflation, low interest rates, low unemployment, low public sector debt, AAA credit rating. So there were many respects in which we were a, a good government and, and a visionary government, things that we sought to do in relation to schools, in relation to the national National disability insurance scheme in relation to renewable energy. There are lots of lots of good things. Look, but there's no doubt, uh, Calvin, that um, Labor is a party of big ideas, mm. and uh, Labor is a party of, say, looking at the infrastructure of the whole of the population. Uh, but, but, as I said, when one has to also think along. Uh, the other side and say, why did the Liberals actually win? Yes. They won because the perception was and has been that parts, that all these great ideas need a lot of money and a big bureaucracy to make things work. Mm. Now, Australia is a, sm a very large continent. It has a lot of resources. It, it had um, a plus budget and, uh, you know, during the six-year term of Labor, a lot of things happened, but we have ended up with selling some of the family silver, so to speak, in order to carry out some of the big item uh, uh, items that Australia needs for the future. So we are sort of looking backwards a little bit now and saying, wait a minute, we don't want to sell all of the same family silver, and which groups actually missed out during the Labor years. Mm. Can you identify look, some? Look, I think on the on the point about nation building, uh, we need to be nation building rather than selling off the family silver as you describe it. And I think that things like the, the National Broadband Network have been about that, about uh, nation building and preparing us for the future. But it's true that uh, we lost for a reason and uh, it seems to me that while our economic management was good, our political management was poor and there are policy areas where uh, we weren't doing what, what people wanted, what the voters wanted and uh, we need to do that and I think also um, those leadership issues that we had, we've really allowed leadership, and it's not just the Labor Party, but as as a country, um, allowed leadership to become much more important than it should be. So we have these perennial discussions about who should be leader and we, you know whether this one would be more popular than than this other one. Whereas in fact we need a much more democratic arrangement, and frankly the sort of uh, arrangement that was more in evidence when I was young and first involved in politics, where uh, ordinary Labor Party members, or for that matter, Liberal Party members and other people had a say. Let's go to to one of the key elements of the Australian psyche, and that's the idea of the understanding of sport. It seems to me that politics today is a bit like sport. If you have a good team, mm. and that team works together, uh, then, and the team works to win, and appear to be doing the right thing by 
uh, the fans, then that team actually manages to get the prize at the end of uh, the competition. Yes. Now, politics in a democratic society is a bit like that. Mm. Now, those distractions that you mentioned, they may appear to be distractions, but in fact, what has happened in the last six years is that the leaders, uh, in my opinion, did pretty well, considering that they didn't have a team that worked together. Mm -hmm. So they tried to do all sorts of things. And what it has to happen in politics that whichever political party you belong to, you have to work with the team. Yes. It, well, uh, what, well, what's happened is that uh, in the past you had parliamentary parties and ministers who were involved in decision making and decision implementing but increasingly with the 24-7 media cycle you see the the leader the Labor Party leader the Liberal Party leader the Prime Minister the Premier the leaders of the opposition going out every day and announcing what the position is and responding to every issue that media might ask them. So essentially the role of, of MPs and the role of ministers has been diminished by that process and I think in terms of teamwork that is uh, destructive in relation to teamwork. I, I remember hearing uh, years ago about the way things were done in Japan was that uh, it would take them a long time to make a decision because they involved everybody and uh, everyone had to have their say and have, have their perspective considered. But once they'd made their decision, it was very easy to get it implemented because everyone had been involved and everyone was committed to the outcome. Whereas uh, you can have this alternative model where leaders announce what will what will happen, they will make the decisions, but in terms of implementing them and getting them done well, that's much more problematic because people haven't been involved and they're not so committed. Well, on that note, I'm going to say uh, that our first segment is over and uh, thank you. Come back to Tampadula TV uh, for segment two.